WOCR 89.1. All right, everybody. So for those of you who may not know, February is Black History Month. And WOCR has the privilege of having speaker Natalie Williams here for an on-air interview after she spoke at Olivet's Black History Month program. Thank you so much for being here today, Natalie. Tell us a little bit about your story to give our listeners more of your background. Well, thank you first for having me here at Olivet College. This has been this has been an honor, and I had the opportunity and the privilege of meeting some of the students here before I actually speak in. Just thoroughly impressed with their goals and their majors and things that they want to accomplish, not only here at the college, but once they graduate. Um, to provide a little bit more background, public speaking is something that I enjoy because there's nothing like watching your audience members have that aha moment and watching things come full circle um, for them. So with public speaking, I started out doing it a little bit in undergrad. Um, my sorority sisters would kind of push me out to the wolves to actually do it. And then I realized I was good at it. And then I went to graduate school. Went to graduate school at Illinois State University after finishing up undergrad at Central Michigan University. And at Illinois State, they were like, look, we're going to give you a graduate assistantship, which means we're going to pay your tuition and pay you. However, you have to, um, in return, teach a public speaking class. And I'm like, okay, I don't know if I have the skills for it, but I'll do it. And so I, I rocked it out, and I loved engaging with my students. And um, I had a really special moment happen to me at graduate school. I wrote my thesis on this show called A Different World. I had watched the show every day, I felt like, since the seventh grade. And it spoke to my my heart and my spirit. And um, I did a 130-page master's thesis on it. And as it would happen, I actually got to meet the cast as a surprise on the Steve Harvey show and then my alma mater Central Michigan was like hey come back and keynote our freshman program our freshman leadership program and uh use your different world experience as a foundation and you'll be talking in front of 300 people I did it and it felt like I had unlocked my passion and my purpose and it's been smooth selling ever since that is so cool all right so you've been a a public speaker for a while then Mm -hmm. all right um What do you like most about it? Hmm. Sharing my story. Sharing my story is something I enjoy because there was one point in time where I was not as readily open to share my story and to let people know that no matter what you face, you can still accomplish your goals. And college is the perfect place for you to figure out what you like to do and learn more about yourself. And I used to be known for being a very, very private person. (laughs) So being able to share my story as a method of inspiration and empowerment is something that I do not take for granted for one second. All right. Um, So why do you think it's important that we as a nation celebrate Black History Month? Black History Month is... Is, is important and it, it's critical. It's critical to know um, your history, know where you, you, you come from and to be able to really appreciate some of the things that we have now because we, we didn't all have it then. And sometimes, uh, not even sometimes, but we didn't have it then just based off the color of our skin. Um, that's, that's important to understand that. And I believe that if you don't know where you come from, it's a lot more difficult to know where it is that you're going. So it's important for us to take time and to celebrate the people that gave their lives, that gave their livelihood, that gave their finances, their times, their talents, and their treasures to make sure that we have a lot of rights and we have a lot of regulations in place to make sure that people feel safe and secure no matter what they look like or no matter where they come from. And so it's important to celebrate people that have given everything for some for some people that they may not have even met or would know that existed so people that fought back in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s and and constantly fought for people that may have not been born until 2003 when those people that fought are long gone that's a good answer (laughs) thank you Um, so tell us about or tell us how the tv show it's a different world impacted you and your choice to attend college so how much time do we have? <laughs> um, we're just we're just going to go till with three Because I can talk about this show all day. <laughs> okay. uh, the special thing about this show is that it really showcased what happened on a college campus. Before I even knew what happened on a college campus, I felt the authenticity of the show. Um, when I studied abroad in undergrad, I got really homesick. So I studied abroad in Singapore by myself for four and a half months. Oh, my goodness. 
by myself. Wow. And um, I would get so homesick, but I would go to YouTube when it was on YouTube and watch the show all over again. Mm -hmm. And I felt the warmest feeling in my spirit, in my soul. And I knew that I would be okay. And so by me going back and rewatching this show, it just reaffirmed and it reassured that what I was experiencing in college was normal because all college students went through those roommate issues or thinking they found the love of their life <laughs> when they really didn't. It just showcased life in general. And so you didn't necessarily have to be an African-American college student to identify with it. You could just be somebody living life to identify with it. And within those characters, I actually saw myself. And so I had a graduate professor sit down with me one time when I was writing this thesis and I asked him, like, am I crazy? <laughs> like, am I crazy for feeling like I really have a relationship with this show and the characters? And he assured me, no, you're not crazy. There's an actual term for this. And it's called a parasocial relationship. Okay. Yep. Parasocial relationship is when we have legitimate relationships with characters in television shows. And it's one sided because those char those television characters are sharing their whole lives with us, yeah. their deepest secrets. And we're taking it in, but we could never tell them anything about ourselves because we can't speak through that television. And people actually go through the stages of grief when TV shows cancel or yeah. go off air yeah. or when characters die or go to jail. They actually experience real life issues related to those experiences. So that show, it taught me everything about life. It taught me what to expect about college. It taught me the importance of, of, of a good inner circle. Because that's the one thing that all those characters had in common is they had each other and they had each other to be able to say, you were wrong for that. Or I'm going to congratulate you. Let's go out and celebrate or to console each other when life would happen. All right. What, how was, so you're talking about the college experience of these people in this show. How was your college experience as a student? <laughs> oh, good old CMU. <laughs> college was awesome, to be honest with you. Um, I was blessed to have an awesome college roommate. She, We went in blind, so we didn't know each other okay. at all. I've had that experience. Um, <laughs> yeah, we went in blind, and I did not know what to expect. But we hit it off, and we lived together all four years of college. Wow. And we became like family. We had, this, we had these ground rules when we first started college. I'm not your mom. You're not mine. However, um, you're my friend, and I care about you. So if you're ever going to stay out late, send me a text and let me know. And I will prefer you let me know who you're going to be with. So God forbid anything happens, right. I can tell your mom, your parents, uh, the last place she was going was this place and she was going to be with this person. And so we just had this culture of respect and CMU just had some great opportunities to be a student leader. Anything and everything that you wanted to do, they gave you the opportunity and you had to take advantage of it. And so whether it was studying abroad, I had the opportunity to do that. And then when I came back, I got to talk to other students about the importance of studying abroad. I got to also work with students of color to talk to them about going and how to find money. I got a chance to lead women empowerment groups, um, lead my sorority on campus, just do some really amazing things and leave no stone unturned on that college campus. And to this day, I get brought back into CMU every semester to speak. And I don't take that for granted because that's a school that has 20,000 students. So every semester for them to bring me back yeah. for some things that I've done, um, I don't take it for granted. And I try to always find students to mentor there from CMU. Okay. Greek life is pretty important to me. I am a member of Olivet College's Alpha Lambda Epsilon. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your Greek life experiences and what do you think it offers to students? Greek life allows you to have community. And community is really important as a college student. Greek life allows you to learn more about yourself. It allows you to build those sisterhood or brotherhood bonds that will last way beyond your college years. And so uh, Greek life taught me the importance of sisterhood, to be honest with you. And that's something that I will never, ever lose. And so my sorority sisters, some of them, I feel like I can't go <laughs> a day <laughs> without talking to because we go through life together and we keep each other encouraged. And we're really quick to check each other if we're wrong, but we're also really quick to congratulate each other when we accomplish our goals or, you know, if we go through heartbreak, we're right there with each other and we want to change the world. And so Greek life allows us to have that community to do so. Okay. Um. Where can people go online to follow you and find out more about you? Absolutely. So I have my website, www.natwillspeak.com. 
Again, that's www.natwillspeak.com, which is a play on my name, <laughs> Natalie <laughs> Williams. And um, social media, so Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at natwillspeak.com. So N-A-T-W-I-L-L-S-P-E-A-K. Okay. Cool. And you're in, it's Nat Will Speak on all social media? All social media, Facebook, right. Twitter, Instagram, all of those things. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. This is yeah. awesome. I, it, normally, I'll be honest with you, I don't like the sound of my voice. But right now, my voice sounds really good. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I can, you know, hum a tune or start singing or something. <laughs> yeah, and I've never done an on-air interview before, so thank you for being that experience for me as well. Thank you. Um, we will be going back into our regular programming and thank you for being here thank you so much for having me all right this has been wocr we've got the hottest variety keep it locked to wocr hot hits the hottest variety Baby.